Qualification for England has done brilliantly there. Great ball into, and there's the opener. And wasn't it superbly? A lot of room to play it in behind. Oh, it's superb. Duggan with the corner and arriving brilliantly with the finish. England get a third goal. It's Alex Greenwood. What a corner that was. Are they all my clients? Yes. <laughs> There we go. There she go. got it. She got it. Happy days. Yes, they are all <laughs> That your would clients. be worrying if I didn't get that. <laughs> it would. But yeah, now you represent some of the biggest and the best stars that we have in the Women's Super League. Yep. How is that? It's awesome. They're such a great bunch. I absolutely love working with them. As I said, it's so important to work and surround yourself with good people and... I can be happier with with the with the players that I work with. The feedback that we always get, especially when working on like commercial shoots or media days, whatever it may be, the feedback is always so positive mm. with with the women's players. The women understand their value and the role that they have to play within women's sport at the moment. It's such a huge talking point. There's so much opportunity for growth. And they they get that more than anyone. You know that whatever you throw their way, they're going to put 110% into. Um, And it just makes my life so much easier. So yeah, they're they're a great bunch. They are. And I only played you literally four then. I think there was, who was there? Fran, Jordan Nobbs was in there. Tasha Harding was in there. Alex Greenwood. Yeah. I mean, if I'd have played anymore, we'd be here. (laughs) We'd be here for like hours. How do you split your time between everyone and everything? How do you... I suppose, prioritise your time Mm -hmm. to fit their needs? It's a good question. I mean, there's very few days where everyone needs everything on the same day. Mm -hmm. Um, When that happens, it's quite stressful. I I don't think I get stressed that easy, which certainly helps. I'm quite relaxed in my nature. If if something's urgent, you get it done. Yeah. Uh, Managing expectations is huge. That's one of the biggest things that I've learned. I've never liked to tell someone I could do something if I wasn't 100% sure I could do it. Yeah. So, you know, if a client needs something, but I'm in the middle of trying to get a transfer done that needs doing that day, I'll tell them and they'll respect that. And on the flip side of that, whilst you're scouting, Mm -hmm. yes, ability is obviously up there as top priority for you, but is also personality. Completely. Up there. 100%. They go hand in hand. Completely. They've got to have the talent, obviously. Uh, like I said, want to work at the the top level, but they've got to be good people. As much as I'm representing them, they're representing our brand. Yeah. You know, if you're not happy off the pitch, you're not going to perform well. So we've got to make sure that our clients are as happy and comfortable as possible. And, you know, part of the role of an agent is to make sure that all their needs are seen to off off the field um, and they can just focus on everything football. You know, whether that be sorting their car insurance out to booking a flight or sorting their holiday out whatever it may be yeah. will we'll help facilitate that just to make their lives easier and make sure that they can perform and do their day to day but it's really important that you get on with them off the field because your teammates away from your family that they feel they can go to and just relax and, trust and know as well. that whatever you say is mm. going nowhere and you can get it's nice to get a bit of advice from someone who isn't there all the time without a shadow of a doubt I think everybody appreciates a person like that on the flip side rejection I guess some people come to you like (laughs) but it's a part of your job yeah like you can't take everybody on it's physically impossible as you said you you're already full you keep a small number Mm -hmm. is it hard to sort of have to say to somebody doesn't quite work right now how do you frame that to somebody and how do you do yeah, that? Yeah, it, it's tough. I always, I'd never say no straight away. I always, if I can, meet with whoever it is who's maybe approached us mm-hmm. just to find out a bit more about them. I'm always up for offering help if I can as well. So if it's not someone I want to take on as a client, I'm always happy to help and advise. Obviously, if they want to go sign with someone else, cool. Yeah. Um, absolutely you'd never hold hold anyone back but it's it's tough Uh, there's some um, amazing players out there who have had conversations with but they might just not fit just haven't worked for one reason for another at that at that moment in time and you know you've got to think about a number of things you don't want 10 players in the same position because if they're all out of contract and you're looking for for clubs for them all they're all going to be up against each other Mm. under the same agent it probably doesn't really work in their favours. So but, much goes into this yeah, that people just wouldn't even realise. 
yeah. so much goes into this it's mad but it's so interesting uh you've touched on this a little bit commercial deals yeah you deal with commercial deals for the girls how important is it that these commercial deals come to fruition mm-hmm. and they're growing aren't they the opportunities in these commercials yeah. for girls are growing absolutely i think it's worth giving a shout out to Susie who works alongside me on the commercial side please do she's awesome Susie, big Susie up. Ralph <laughs> um so Susie works on the commercial side and heads up women's sport at CAA so we work alongside each other for everything women's football and I think it's safe to say that we've almost had more commercial incomings for the women's side than we have from the men's side in the last year that's a and sign that's, of where things are going yeah it, it really is and if it's not if it's not Brands coming to us saying we want to use a female footballer. We're always having conversations to educate brands as to why they should use a women's footballer or just a female athlete in general. Now's the time to do it. They're not a tick box exercise anymore. They have a story to tell. And I think brands are now starting to recognize that they can use their brands to tell stories stories through these amazing women We've come a long way in actually quite a short space of time. Mm. And you can't rush these things. They have to be done, not slowly, but you've got to do it the right way and make sure things are done the right way. Otherwise, we'll just crash. Yeah. And I actually think we've we've done such a great job of that in England. The WSL is now the most, in my opinion, and probably of a number of people now, the most attractive and competitive league in the world. And that would reflect with the signings that are now happening. People like Sam Kerr exactly. want to play in the WSL exactly. and now do. Exactly. There's no bigger compliment than that. They're attracting top players. And we've now got the Americans coming over. Mm. It's it's just unbelievable. And bringing those big names in is only going to benefit the profile of the game. Also, I feel for the first time properly, I'm going to say, mm. um, the Women's World Cup in France last year was the first time I felt the public... Yeah, we're on board with this. It, it felt incredible. like Men's World Cup. Uh-huh. People were wearing the shirts. And like France obviously was in such close proximity. I yeah. felt like a lot of people went and yeah. actually made an effort and people spoke about it on the tube and on the streets and out and about. The pubs were like, full in England. Yeah, like what was going what? on yeah. with that? Like people were hanging flags out the window and you yeah. just think, I feel like that is the first time that people were actually like, okay, women's football, we're going to get behind this. Come on the girls. Yeah. Which was amazing. And if that's where we are in 2019, Mm -hmm. think about where it's going to go. The next few years are huge. We've got the Olympics, then the Euro straight after, and then the World Cup again straight after that. So the next few years are huge. If we've seen what happened last year from the World Cup, we've got a wave of that for the next three or four years. And that's really exciting for for someone in my position Mm. because there is so much opportunity ahead for a brand. I think that's really attractive. You can sign a three-year deal and cover three major tournaments and think of the exposure that's going to give to your brand. It's exciting. So exciting. When you when you frame it like that, yeah. it's just like, I'm like, great, how do I sign up to be an agent? <laughs> I want to join you. This is brilliant. Um, so you work in the commercial side, she said, um, but also you deal with transfers. Yes. And transfer windows Yay. and all the fun things like that. <laughs> um, what is it? What is it like working a transfer window? Is it, you know, like last minute dash signings here and you're flying in when you can, yeah. flying in and out to various places. How do they sort of operate? Do you deal with the club? Do you deal with the player? Is it a group effort? Everyone. Okay. Absolutely everyone. It's a really exciting, strange whirlwind of a few months, really. Um, I don't think people necessarily know how much work goes in before the transfer window as well Mm. because essentially you're lining up deals to take place as soon as the window opens yeah um so there's a lot of work that goes in before in the in the months coming up to to a window um yeah it's just always a really busy time i mean you're never really gonna have all your players to move in one window that would be quite stressful even for you who's literally the most laid back yeah person. I think that would stress me out <laughs> um but a- actually talking about this year in particular it's been far busier than I probably anticipated I wasn't sure how much was going to get done um mm. or whether you know clubs were just going to try and retain all the players that they had just to for security yeah but actually there's been so much movement yes yeah, it's, it's, it's been really exciting I'm still working on a few and hopefully they'll 
get done over the next couple of weeks you have so many like it's like juggling balls in the air you just have them all going at the same time isn't it when one lands you'll deal with that one and then the next Uh um being a football agent what is the biggest misconception about your job you could probably answer that (laughs) (laughs) so for me being a tv presenter i know people are like oh you just rock up and read an auto key and go home it's so easy and i'm like honey you have no idea what is going on exactly the prep i do beforehand the chat that goes on in my ear the knowledge that i have instilled in myself to be able to do that and half the time i'm like i'm not even reading an auto cue what or what misconception perhaps could you squash about being a football agent (sighs) It's 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 funny, isn't it? People think that agents are money grabbers. They're not very nice people. Mm. They don't have the players' interests at heart. They're only in it for themselves. They're in it for themselves. They're selfish. You know, you hear all sorts. All they do is just go to football matches and get a big paycheck. Yeah. You know, and well, from my side, it could be further, <laughs> it could be further, further away from the from truth. That. Yeah. yeah. I'm not, I don't, do this job for a massive paycheck and I know that probably sounds hugely controversial but I really want to build the profile of the game and I think we need agents to help drive that forward Mm. and do it in the right way do it in the respectful way work with clubs understand budgets uh, be respectful of budgets because clubs are in different positions but we do also need to bridge the gap and the disparity across the league which is still quite big you know the top clubs are paying their top players a decent salary now but then you've got the top players at the bottom end of the tier getting paid you know next to nothing compared and it's that that's the gap that we want to we want to close and have you noticed within the people that you come across that you're coming across more females working in those positions over the years or do you still feel it's slightly lacking yeah i do think it's slightly lacking um there's only a couple of i've really come across who are who are doing brilliant jobs Mm. but there's not enough of us doing it and that's the thing i'm just gonna put out there half the females working they're surpassing their male counterparts because I'm sorry, I really believe that females work so hard. And I'm absolutely not saying that the males, I don't, of yeah. course people do. But I just think because females every day have to face, especially in the football world, mm-hmm. the perception of, well, you're not going to be as good as the man. Like yeah. you're just not, you know, like, because that's what everyone says to me. Why don't you work in men's football? You could earn so much more money. And I'm like, it's not about it's that. It's not about that. I That's don't want not to work it. it. You know, it's it's a funny old world. I know. You're like, <laughs> I did work in it and I left because the women are better. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's move on to game number two. Okay, so you did win that first one. You're on five points off the leaderboard. Um, this one is called The Wrong Answer Is Right. It's basically, I stuck this in there because this is how I justify these games. <laughs> Quick thinking, adapting to your situation. These are the type of things that you have to do every day. But also sometimes you are just playing winging it. Like okay. we all are. All you have to do to gain a point is give me an incorrect answer. Mm-hmm. They're all sports related, just an incorrect answer. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah, you're good. Okay, we're going to do 45 seconds on the clock. Here we go. In three, two, one. Name a team in the WSL. Charlton. Who is the men's Liverpool manager? Jose Mourinho. Which sport uses costumes, trunks, caps and goggles? Badminton. Which sport is played at Twickenham? Golf. Who are the Lionesses? Um, Lions. (laughs) How many goals are there in a hat-trick? Four. What does VAR stand for? Um, Oh. (laughs) Video... Incorrect answer. Oh. We'll move on to the next yeah. one. Uh, in which city is Stamford Bridge? Liverpool. In what sport did Gary Lineker compete in? Swimming. Name a racket sport. Golf. <laughs> How many players are in? Oh, we are up. VAR threw you, didn't oh, it? really threw me. I was trying to, I was going video. But, but, but. It's hard to think of another word yeah. like that begin with VAR. I have to say... You are definitely the coolest under pressure. Yeah. (laughs) Without a shadow of a doubt, I feel like you barely broke a sweat there. Whereas other people were like, (laughs) and you're 
You're just so... It's just, good to know. Honestly, cool. How many did we end up there? Nine. That's pretty... That's a good score. That's a solid. Awesome. Solid score is that. We'll add it to five. Right. What words of advice can you offer to others? And I appreciate this. It's quite an open and a broad question. Yeah. But who wants to work in the field? Who wants to get into it? Gosh, I mean... 